Hello and welcome to Dog Show Mentors Facebook Live. I'm Lee Whittier, founder, host, and mentor. I'm here today with Richard Paquette from Canada. Welcome, Richard. Good afternoon, Lee. And so today, um, if you're with us, please post in the chat your name, your breed, and how often you train your dog. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. And while you're doing that, I'm going to do something that I haven't done before. And that is introduce myself to all of you. Hi, Maggie. Welcome. So I've been in, in dogs uh, my whole life. Uh, my mother was a hobby breeder, but I started in Rottweilers in 1981. And I bred Rottweilers since 1986. So with... Um, with changing over to working for the American Kennel Club as an AKC field rep, I had a break in my breeding program and took up again 12 years ago with Spet and Terriers. I've been judging since 2000. So, you know, you can do the arithmetic on that. I'm now a multi-group judge. I judge Terrier toys, non-sporting and working breeds, plus some um, sporting and hounds. And Christine Robinson, welcome back. Hillary Chambers, why are her pointing Griffons daily? Christine says that she trains weekly when not showing, but she's not showing right now. Well, get back in there, girl. Cindy with Spanish Water Dogs every day. All right. Those of you who are training every day, you're going to have... Uh, some new additions to what you're doing with what Richard is going to share today. And um, in addition to those uh, qualifications, if you will, um, six years ago, I started the first dog show mentoring program. And uh, so everything has been online. And of course, with the advent of COVID, everyone now does, does that. I mean, it's, it, it was a thing six years ago, and now it is commonplace to be in Zoom meetings a lot and learn a lot from the comfort of your home. Hi, Crystal. Yes. Welcome. Lakeland Terriers, only a few minutes a day. I wonder where you got that technique from. And Anna with Havanese. Tracy, Cairns, Colorado. Good job. And Kate, hi, with Wheatons. So today, um, as you know, I have Richard Paquette here with me. And just briefly, most of you know him, but he's been breeding purebred dogs since 1971. So a little bit longer than I have and is a breeder of many, many hundreds of Canadian champions, American champions. And he was also a professional dog show handler. So he showed his own dogs and he showed other people's dogs. So, and as a director for the Canadian Kennel Club, which is really exciting, um, part of what he does for the Canadian Kennel Club is trains the juniors. And so what we're going to talk about today has a little impact on that. Um, Richard, talk to us a little bit about that junior handling chair council in Canada and the seminars that you do for them. Yeah, so for the past decade or so, I've been the chair of the Junior Kennel Club Council and it, uh, my mandate to, you know, set up all kinds of programs for juniors and education was really a big focus. And I found that um, if we used a training method, especially with the juniors, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, up to 18 years of age, if we sort of given, give them something that they would not forget. So when we do get into our bit of instruction today, a little going beyond mentoring, where we're going to do some instructional training today. And uh, I taught all the kids to dance. And years later, they'd come back to me and they'd say, oh my God, I've never forgot that you taught me how to dance. And uh, then when I do go around the ring, I do all the techniques that do make me look polished and help 
me show my dog to its, you know, to its, its best of its ability and attributes. So we're going to teach you how to dance today. And we touched on it just a little bit. We're going to teach you a philosophy that I've practiced my whole career. And it's the training method and the training philosophy of only training five minutes every day. And I don't mean Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. I mean every day. For all you busy people, I don't accept excuses well. So don't be giving me this BS that you don't have time to spend five minutes a day with the dog that you have to show. I was a professional dog handler and I tried to find five minutes which each of, with each of the 20 or 30 dogs that I had to show and, and try and have some one-on-one -on -one with them where, where I just reinforced a lot of the things that I expected them to know Pat in the ring. Well, and, and so to, in a nutshell, these are tried and true philosophies that are going to help people increase their win rate. Yes. And, and it's also born and why I want to reinforce it with all you guys is as a judge, my pet peeve is people coming into my ring who they themselves are not trained and whose dogs are not ready. And there's no excuse for that. Don't tell me you have a COVID puppy or you have this or you, I've heard every excuse. I don't take excuses well. So with some of the instructions we give you today, if you follow them religiously within four to six weeks, you will have a star on your hand. Well, that is, uh, I, I, I am excited because I've got a young dog, so I want to hear what you have to say as well. Um, Lisa from Edmonton um, has Amstaffs and Manchesters, and she does ringside candidates. Hi, Lisa. Um, Sherry Saylor from Minnesota. And Stephanie says that she started young when she was four years old showing dogs. And how often do you train? And Izzy is, is giving you a shout out, Richard, about how much she enjoyed being in the ring with you um, in, uh, in Canada. At Saskatoon, where where uh, where we were. Well, again, um, my underlying philosophy too is having fun. I have fun no matter what I do, whether I'm doing a podcast like this and sharing some knowledge, or whether I'm judging in the ring. I like to have it to be a fun experience. Because for all you guys out there, if you're not having fun, why are you doing this? Right. So you need to <laughs> increase your winning percentage, which always increase your fun, and learn how to enjoy being at the dog show, win or lose. Well, you know, I tell people that the dog show sport is the only sport where people come <laughs> untrained, unprepared, with no experience, and still expect to win. And so part of what we do at Dog Show Mentor is teach people how to compete and be competitive with their dogs. And so let's get started on your tried and true philosophies. And I urge you to take this at heart and practice whatever Richard tells you diligently so that um, you too can win more in the ring. So. Well, one of the first most important things is that first impression. And the majority of judges, when you first enter the ring, do take the whole class around the ring. This is where that first impression is so important. And I'm going to teach you a dance, okay? And I hope you'll never forget to do these three steps of this dance as you walk in the ring and take your dog around the ring. The first and the most important step is, number one, where you're going. So you need to <laughs> not run into the gates, not run into the dog in front of you. You need to be observant as to where you're going. You're looking for obstacles in an outdoor ring, like a, a pothole 
or you know the dog in front of you that pooped in the on the mats and you run right into it i mean you need to be aware of what's going on so the first step of the dance is to watch where you're going now secondly you need to watch how your dog is moving you will not believe how many times your dog paces because you fail to start fast enough or your dog is braking constantly galloping instead of staying in a nice uniform consistent trot now subliminally when you're moving around the ring and not missing a step it gives a judge an impression that your dog is so well constructed that um you know you shine you stand out the judge takes notice now you go in the ring on that first impression and your dog's galloping or pacing you're getting a negative impression immediately and sometimes that can cost you first place even though your dog may be the best dog in the ring so watch where you're going is step is the is the first step of the dance the second step of the dance is to look down and see how your dog is moving and be sure that he's moving at the correct speed for your breed and then <laughs> last and i think most importantly because if you want to gain that judge's attention if you want to ex exude body language and confidence you must look up at the judge you must not stare him down, you know, and, and we're all adults on here, so I'll say uh, <laughs> tits and teeth. You don't do that. But do look up at the judge with a, a nice, confident look on your face and not one of those phony smiles. So it's a dance. It's three beats. And the beat is this. One, two, three. One, two two three so as you're going around the ring you're looking where you're going you're looking down at your dog and you're looking up at the judge and the beat is look down at your dog or look where you're going look down at your dog and look up at the judge now that doesn't mean you have to be an exaggerated head movement all over the place but you do have to have your head held in a position where you're actually doing all those three things to the beat of one, two, three. You don't know how many times I've had the best in show ribbon in my hand and wanted to give it to somebody, but they're never looking at me. And subliminally, sometimes you lose mental patience <laughs> with them. And you say, well, she doesn't want it. This other dog is asking for it. So the dance. So next time you're at the dog show and you're visually watching how you go around the ring i want you to think of you're going to dance around that ring you're going to go in the beat of one two three and you're going to look where you're going you're going to look down at your dog how it's moving and you're going to look up at the judge okay it's sort of like a fox trot one, two, three. <laughs> but not that, that is that four beats? I yeah. can't remember. <laughs> but not that fast. So keep the beat a little slower. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, when you are moving your dog as part of this instruction, when you go around a ring, you move at the top speed for your breed such that they do not break the trot they stay in their trot okay so that means you're going around the ring at a fairly good speed and that will give the best impression of the judge now go around the ring and trot properly for five steps and gallop for three and 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 get dragged for one and surge for the uh, that's not what we want we want uniform motion going around the ring i hate to use the word robotic but robotic such that the dog looks like he never puts a foot out of place so going around the ring the top speed 
that you should go for your breed at a trot and not breaking the trot. The second thing is the down and back as an example or the individual pattern. You need to go in a whole slow motion. Your brain has to just mellow and go into slow motion. How many of you ruin your chance on that individual movement by being harried or trying to do it too quickly or not getting ready, not having the lead ready, not doing a courtesy turn, all of the above. So when it's time to move your dog individually for the judge, your brain goes into slow motion because the speed you go down and back is considerably slower than the speed you go around the ring. So, around the ring, dance, one, two, three. Up and down, go into slow motion. When you come back to the judge, stop three feet minimum away from the judge and be ready for a free stack. Then is not the time to touch your dog. Your dogs all stand better naturally then half of you stack them. So why are you always fidgeting with your dog? And when you do come up to the judge and you stop three feet away, you face towards the judge, the most outstanding feature of your dog. I'm a Shih Tzu breeder. My dogs always had great heads. I always had the head facing the judge. And if I'd had a dog with a weak top line, or a poor tail carriage, I would always face head to the judge. Now, if I had a dog... I'm sure you never had one that, that, that had that. I'm sure. <laughs> no, there are no perfect dogs, Lee. So even I had to show a few that were not perfect. So, but if your dog, his best feature is his outline, then you need to turn your dog sideways to the judge. So it, it's, it is just common sense, isn't it? Well, you know, you say it's common sense, but how many people do it right? I, I agree. I agree. They always want to do it like how other people do it because they want to copy somebody else, but they don't know why that person is doing that. So that person might be a top handler who's showing off the profile because that's the dog's best feature. But the person who's copying the head in front of the best feature. So they should be changing, but they copy somebody else. Um, you know, I... As, you know, taking this one step further with the dance, I always tell people, learn how to ballroom dance. Go and learn ballroom dancing. It will make you understand rhythm and how to change your own rhythm and move your body, move your feet. And yes, when you're talking about moving your feet, you want to be a team with your dog. So you, if your dog has good reach and drive, you personally need to move with good reach and drive. You don't take short little pity patter steps. You take larger steps. If you're showing a Saluki or a, a larger breed, you need to take a graceful step and you need to be light on your feet. So think about how you yourself move. Is your movement consistent with your dog's movement? where you have long, graceful strides rather than short little pitter-patter strides. That makes your whole team a better impression for the judge. It does. And we've got lots of interesting comments here for you, Richard. Um, yeah, Michael says, terrier movement, deliberate, not too fast. Absolutely. It is, it is a... There is that terrier walk. And if you don't know how to do it, you're, you're not a terrier handler. Um, <laughs> and on the down and back, Christine says, how do you handle needing to come out fast so your dog doesn't pace? Well, sometimes that's where it's necessary to do the courtesy turn. I'm not a big fan of the courtesy turn, but when the judge pulls you from the line and he says, okay, move them around, sometimes you need to whip out there onto the mat and come around and then head in the right direction. So that's when 
If you do have a pacer, a courtesy turn is almost necessary to get your dog moving at the right speed. And, and Christine, um, I also um, have a speaker coming to Dog Show Mentor who talks about how different conditioning systems will help a dog to stop pacing, that pacing becomes muscle memory for the dog. And she teaches um, people how to train their dogs in a conditioning system. So uh, stay tuned for that dog show mentor speaker, guest speaker as well. And let's see. And the other, the other exciting thing that you may do in the ring is you may talk to your dog. How many of you are not talking to your dogs? If you want to get him ha a little excited so he doesn't pace, you need to do happy talk. Okay, let's go. Come on, dog. And then if you're a little bit away from the dog and you know your dog's about to break from the judge, I say, you need to use your little mean inside voice. Easy, easy, no, no. So you need to have voice inflection for your dog. If you need to pick them up, you talk happy. If you need to calm them down, you talk a little mean. And, and, and so you need to use your voice. I don't know how many exhibitors go up and down and never say a word. You know, like, get on it. So we can't spend too much time on the dance. We need to get to the five minute every day thought. Yeah, we've only got a few minutes left, so yes. let's go. So let's go real quick. Five minutes every day from the time the puppies are born, okay? People say, when do I start? You start handling your puppies when they're born. A lot of touching, a lot of just little fun stacking. I like to hang my young dogs and let them let them dangle their four feet and get confident to letting them themselves relax in your hand. And then the five minute thing every day, I have a table breed. So I take my dog and I pick them up underneath the, the throat real quick and between the two hind legs and I plop them on the table. I just don't put them on the table. I make them use his legs. I bounce them a little bit and all in a fun, playful environment, not a mean stand. That's not how you train dogs. You train dogs by happy repetition. So you take them and you bounce them on the table. You slap them on the derriere. If it's a boy, you grab his testicles real quick. And you grab his mouth and I don't mean gentle. You just grab it and quickly look at it. And repeating that for five minutes every day and, and not on the table for five minutes, you know, 30 or 40 seconds on the table, one or so minutes on the ground, back up on the table. If the kids are around, come and get them to pet the dog. And you start by training your dog to stack, whether it's a table breed or a ground breed, by head control. Don't touch a leg until you've trained your young dog to have his head held such that he doesn't even think of moving it. <laughs> and not in a mean way, in a fun way. And they're going to fight you and try to mouth you. You just hold on for 10 seconds at a time and let go. And the next time, maybe 20 seconds and 30 seconds. And over a one-month period of five minutes every day. Not Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday, Saturday, Saturday. <laughs> you will have a superstar on your hand. Don't walk into my ring and say, you know, your dog's falling off the table or he won't stand still. You know, it's because you didn't put in that effort. Right. Yeah. And, you know, that lack of preparation is a key in if you want to lose. But mm -hmm. if you want to win, you've got to be prepared. So um, in, in preparation, talking about preparation, Dog Show Mentor has a new program that we just developed called Jumpstart. And it's a three-month program for people who want to get a jumpstart on whatever their goals are. So we have a system in place. And I welcome you to um, contact me privately or on my Facebook page. And let's go back to our exhibitors here. And some of these questions are answered within the dog show mentor program. So if you asked a question here, I have probably addressed it already to my members. And Denise, thank you. I'm so happy to hear that 
um, that you have your, your girl um, in, in a show and yeah, floating around the ring at a certain cadence, right? I've talked about cadence before. I have a entire webinar. Yeah, so, watch Marjorie Good for that, that terrier walk. So Nikki mentioned some judges don't give you much space, mm -hmm. then walk. I'm not really sure what you mean by must bit much space. Do you mean when we're coming up to the judge? You choose how far away you stand. On the table, I'm getting old. I hate reaching over and trying to reach for the dog. So when you have that table, put the dog on the side of the table that's closest to the judge, a minimum of dead center, but try to go towards the judge. You all remember Maxine Bean used to put a piece of tape down the center of her table, and you always had to put your dog on the side of the tape closest to her. So remember that, you know, and, 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 in, uh, if you do your five minutes every day, your dog will be able to stand way out there all on its own. It prevents the dog from leaning against you and using that crutch. And, and if your dog leans against you when the judge comes, you have not socialized or prepared well enough. So keep that happy, happy, you know, of that five minutes, probably two and a half minutes on the table, bouncing them, slapping them, do, 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 and you know, on the toy bridge, you don't have to touch the legs a lot. You know, everybody's fidgeting way too much. Now, if your dog stops with one leg out in front of it and one leg slightly behind, you don't have to necessarily fix that. Now, if the toe is pointing outward, yes, you do. But if one foot's ahead of another, just leave it, especially if the judge is looking right at you. The least you touch your dog, the better. Now, when you do have a dog that stops in the front and one foot is ahead of the other, you never pull the leg that's furthest back forward. You always take the leg that's furthest forward back because if you, if you look at dogs from the side, they post more than they ever have their forechest way out to in front of them. So just a quick rule of thumb, if you're gonna grab one leg real quick, it's always the leg that's furthest forward. Pull it back real quick. And don't spend a lot of time. The quicker you can stack your dog in front of me as a judge gives me a subliminal impression that your dog is near perfect and doesn't need a lot of correction. If you're going to fuss with it for a minute, well, you've already lost in my eyes to some degree. So keep in mind, don't fidget. And if it doesn't work the first time, you place that leg back, you let it go, and it moves forward again. There's no point doing it six times. You know, you just go for what you can get and, and don't be fidgeting with your dog. These have been great tips, Richard. And um, I know that everybody's getting a lot out of it and enjoying it. So tell us what your takeaways are. We're about to close and uh, I will look at your questions and uh, see if I can incorporate them into uh, more Facebook Lives. So if you didn't get it answered this week, we'll try to answer it next time. So next week we have a surprise guest and uh, you'll find out who that is next week. So I'm Lee Whittier. Yep, great suggestions. Thank Denise. All right. Thank you so much for being here. This is Lee Whittier, your dog show mentor, signing off. Bye, everybody. And if you do have any questions, I'm on Facebook Messenger.